Hey everyone, I'm Tashina from Logical Harmony. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a good day. Um, today's video, I'm going to be sharing my favorite makeup products of 2022. Wild. All these brands are cruelty free. If you're interested in cruelty free beauty, this is the right channel for you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and you can head over to my website, logicalharmony.net, if you want to learn even more about cruelty free beauty. These products are also all vegan as well. I wanted to split today's video up into like product categories and I just focused on like what I've been using the most. Um, I feel like in 2022, I experimented more with makeup. I tried different brands. I tried different products. I also tried to just slim down my makeup collection. I think that like so many of us coming out of the whole like 2016 YouTube era, we had these ridiculously overcrowded collections with tons of stuff that we weren't using, we weren't reaching for, and it got overwhelming and I got sick of it. And in long distance moves, a lot of it got decluttered. And I'm going to do another declutter soon too, because makeup doesn't last forever. Pay attention to your expiration dates. Don't hold on to things just because you bought them. If you're not using them, get them out of your life. Like they're just taking up space. They're taking up clutter. You don't need that. I've also hardly bought any makeup this year because I really wanted to make sure that what I was getting did add to my collection. I do get sent PR from brands as well. And I'm so, so grateful for that. And through that, I was also able to try a lot of products too. Okay. It's a very long intro. So I'm kind of going to go product by product, category by category. What I notice is that in each category, I tended to gravitate towards a drugstore, like a more affordably priced item, and then a more like higher end. Um, and it's because personally, I can't always justify buying the higher end products. And when I hear of dupes, I want to try them. And I know a lot of you do too. Expensive products, sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're completely worth the money. And other times it's like, you just don't need to spend that much. You really don't. Um, so first thing I'm going to talk about are primers. So the first one is from NYX. It is the Plump Right Back Primer. I love this stuff. This is, I think, the second one that I've purchased. I'm one of those people that loves primer. For me, it makes a huge difference. I have dry skin, and even when I do skincare prep, I feel like primer makes a difference for me. So this is one that I picked up a few times. I really, really like this one. I just think it's great. It worked well under almost every foundation. This year I did change what I was wearing foundation wise. I'll get into that when I talk about foundations, but this one was great. And then the Milk Hydro Grip, so good. They sent me a few of these. I purchased a few of these. This stuff is great. It's completely worth the hype in my opinion, but if you are on a budget, try the NYX one. It's not the same, but it's close enough that you're going to be happy with it. I feel like it doesn't work quite as well on my skin. It doesn't work with quite as many foundations as the Milk one, but considering the price difference, this is a great one to try too. And with how I have my makeup organized, my setting sprays are in the same area as my primers. So I actually picked the same setting sprays. The NYX Plump Finish um, setting spray with electrolytes. I really like this stuff. Um, I do think it makes a difference in keeping my skin hydrated throughout the day. It looked good with my makeup, held my makeup in place. It looked nice. And then the Hydro Grip Set and Spray. This is great. Everyone's talking about this for a reason. I purchased like three of these and then they sent me one or two. I love it. I have this in the primer. I need to just buy in the jumbo size the next time I buy them because they're so good. I can't live without them. I am a huge fan with primers. I've talked about this like years and years ago, but I continue to do it of applying, did I say primers? I meant setting sprays. I'm a huge fan with setting sprays of applying them in layers throughout my makeup. So putting on like my base products, so foundation, concealer, and then setting spray, letting it sit, putting on my powder products, setting spray, letting it sit. For me, having dry skin, it makes a huge difference in how things wear on my skin, making sure my skin doesn't get really like dry and weird throughout the day. Cause sometimes I do get like, you know, the dryness coming through. I get flaky patches. These ones are both great. Okay. Having a dry skin. I love a dewy finish. My skin needs all the help and get with the glow. I still absolutely love the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I think this is amazing. It's beautiful on its own. It looks so good under any foundation. I like to mix it on the skin with my foundations, use it to kind of sheer them out a little bit. Um, or sometimes I just wear this and then concealer under my eyes. 
spot conceal good to go the one from auric is amazing too amazing so this brand auric if you're not familiar it's by sam Ravendahl, samantha as many of us know her by i freaking love sam i've been watching her content for so long she was one of my biggest like beauty makeup inspirations for years and years way way back in the day was when i found her and I'm so proud of her for launching Auric. I think it's an amazing brand. Everything that they've sent me has been great. I picked this up because I couldn't not try it and I absolutely love it. So I do still love the Hollywood Flawless filter, but if it were me and I only had to buy one, I would pick the Auric one because it's great and I love Sam and it's like good quality ingredients, good packaging, and you're supporting an independent brand. Um, I'm not going to talk about it in today's video, but I did get the one from e.l.f. too. So maybe I'll do a mini comparison in some way. I'm not really sure. I don't know how I feel about doing product reviews on YouTube anymore. I feel like they don't do well, um, but I have the e.l.f. one too. Foundation wise, there's two that I used. This one from Milk, the Sun Sunshine Skin Tint. This one from Milk, the Sun... Oh my gosh, why can I not say sunshine? Am I overthinking it? Yes, I am. The Sunshine Skin Tint. I love this. I have I bought one. They sent me one. I recently picked up another. Um, you can buy refills for these, which is super cool. So they don't have them in every shade on the Sephora website, but I believe they're on their own website too. I can't remember. This stuff is great. It is literally, it's skin tint. I'd say it has like medium coverage it's not as sheer as other skin tints that i've tried but it looks so natural on the skin and then when i want a more full coverage foundation i like the kosas one i know that a lot of people with dry skin don't like this i feel like with this skin prep does make a difference it is very full coverage and i don't really wear full coverage that often anymore but it just feels nice on the skin it is a pump bottle i opened it up i don't know why it's really nice looking on the skin it looks very full coverage, very smoothing, great for photos, great for times you do need that full coverage moment. It's not like my everyday foundation, but when I want a full coverage one, and I know a lot of you still do, this is what I reach for. And I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I did also recently pick up the House Labs foundation. That's what I'm wearing today. I really enjoy that too, but I want to test it more and see how I feel. Concealer wise, again, going with the theme kind of theme of high end, low end. The NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. I've gone through a couple of these. I love this. It has a decent amount of coverage. It blends really well. You can just get the tiniest bit out of the pump, which I enjoy. And it's great for dry skin. It's great for under eyes. It's great for spot concealing. It's very, very blendable. So frequently I will do it to like spot conceal and then just blend over my whole face. And it does give coverage all over. You don't have to use that much product at all. It's great. And then the Milk Sunshine Under Eye Brightener. What is the actual name of this? Sun, sun, sunshine Under Eye Tint and Brighten. This is great. I love this. I've purchased a few of them. They've sent me one. I can't get enough of it. This is the concealer that I use today. And I really, really love it. I use this most of the time. So what I do is I apply a little bit under my eyes here, here, and then wherever I need it. And I like to just let it sit and kind of like start to set. And then I blend it out, blended with a brush, blended with a sponge. It looks great either way. And it does on me help to color correct a little bit too. Speaking of color correcting, I do still like the Becca X Smashbox color corrector. Lately, I've just been using the Pacifica Under Eye Glow. It's called Dreamlight Glow. This is great. I apply that like here-ish and anywhere that I want to like lift on my face, if that makes sense. Or days where I don't want to use like Hollywood Flawless Filter and have as much of a glow, I'll use this as a highlight. This is really, really good. I absolutely love this. I've purchased two or three of them. Okay, setting powders. I wanted to talk about a couple as well. This one from Sigma, they sent this to me. I'd never tried Sigma makeup. Really, really like it. This soft focus setting powder, I feel like it does exactly that. It kind of like blurs and smooths and looks so pretty on the skin. I'd say it's like a natural matte finish. It's not matte matte, but it's not radiant. And if you do want radiant, I love the Kosas Cloud Set. It's so pretty and it's just, it works really good on dry skin. You can't even see, um, but I really, really love this one. Now, if I'm looking for a more budget-friendly powder or I want to like, you know, grab something to travel, I carry the ColourPop Pretty, fr pretty Fresh. 
I almost said flesh. Um, I like the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder. You can see I've used this a lot. I've hit pan on it. It's really, really good too. Um, I like to use this thing and just kind of press under my eyes. I use it with a brush. Otherwise, it's really good. And I would say the ColourPop one is going to be better if you're someone who wants a little extra coverage from your powder. This does come in a bunch of different shades. The Kosas one does have some coverage, but it is more of a sheer radiant finish. This is more of a natural matte to matte finish. And then the Sigma one, again, it does have a little bit of color, but it is definitely more on the sheer side. Bronzer, there's two that I used a lot this year. So one is this Milani baked bronzer, which I broke the packaging of and I still use it because it's still technically good. This is a really good budget-friendly bronzer. I find that I have fair skin, and so a lot of bronzers are very, like, orange on me. They're very dark. I do also really like the Lawless bronzer, Summer Skin Velvet. Everything from Lawless that I've tried has been great. They've sent me a bunch of stuff over the years, and everything has been good, very consistent, very, like, just very, very nice. I love their stuff. I like this one as well. If I want like a deeper bronzer, I tend to reach for this one more in the summer. In the winter or spring, my everyday is the Milani one. This one does, I feel like, have a slight natural finish to it. It's not a matte bronzer. And if I want a cream bronzer, I go for the little milk makeup stick. If you're debating any of their cream products, get the trial size because there's so much product in here. I've had this one for almost a year and I am still going on it because I use so little of it. I got the shade Baked. I really, really like this. I purchased this one. They've sent me one as well. I love it. I think it's great. It blends really, really nicely. So for contour, I have two. I cannot find one of them right now, which worries me. I have no idea where it is, but the KVD Beauty Contour Palette, the powder one, so good. That's like my everyday go-to. I love that one. I love that it has the contour shades. It has the highlight shades. It's great for setting under the eyes. It's just really, really nice. I don't know where it is. And then the Fenty Beauty Matchstick Contour. This is so good too. I'm wearing this one today. This is great for days where I want something that you know, I like cream products. Um, I like to layer cream with powder, but this one is really, really nice. And what I like about it too, is if you're going for a very natural look, you can just pop this on your lids as well. But this blends out super, super nicely. I'm so happy Fenty is cruelty-free. This lives up to the hype. I love it. Okay, blush. I realized that there's only a handful I've been using. So I want to talk about liquid blush first, because I do really enjoy that. And then we'll talk about powder. So from a drugstore one, the NYX Sweet, Sweet Cheeks. These are really good. I love the applicator. It's like a doe foot applicator. Um, I like this color for a good nude, but I have like a coral one I like too. I feel like they have a decent color range. These are very pigmented. They blend out. Another one is Rare Beauty. I got the shade Happy. Everyone hypes this up. I feel like, okay, so my friend Tynan, when I was asking him about this, because I trust Tynan for any recommendation of makeup anywhere. When I was asking him, is it worth the hype? Do I really need it? What he said to me was like, yes, it is, but there's a learning curve. And it kind of goes on like, he described it as being like acrylic paint. And honestly, that was the most helpful advice that I've been told about this blush because I kept seeing on TikTok people applying like too much, having a hard time blending it out. And taking the approach of like, oh, it's like acrylic paint. It's gonna like, and Juniper's enjoying the new throw rug that I got. But taking that advice of it's like acrylic paint, it's gonna like stick wherever you put it and be a little hard to blend was incredibly helpful. And I've loved this blush. I think it's so good. It's so beautiful. I, I want more shades, but I don't need more shades. You know what I mean? Okay, for powder blush, this one from ColourPop, which is falling out of the packaging, this one is Kiss and Tell. I hope they still make this. One, the packaging is so freaking adorable. This is a really great nude blush for me, and this does come in a handful of shades. And then my other favorite is from the Black Moon Cosmetics Orb of Light palette. And I just take this one right here and use that as a blush. I use eyeshadows as blushes a lot. Today I did that as well. I'm wearing the Melt Rust palette today, and I mixed like three shades for the blush. I like it. I like a strong blush. I like a lot of pigment and using eyeshadow sometimes is the best way for me to get that. Other face products, freckle pens, ColourPop, Lime Crime, great. Five to ten dollars. These ones are a little more expensive but they go on sale for about five dollars so I really like both of them. Highlight I'm gonna skip over because 
I just haven't really been as into highlight this year. I picked up a few recently that I like, but I've been just trying to find a good, like holy grail highlight. I feel like I haven't found one. I love, you know, those liquid highlighters that I mentioned earlier, but I feel like I haven't found like the highlight. So I'm going to hold off on talking about highlight. Um, eyeshadow palettes too, Black Moon, Orb of White. This has been in my favorites for years. I probably need to replace this palette because this is very, very old. I freaking love this palette so much though. It's like, this is my go-to palette for everything you can do eyes, you can do face. Like I said, I'll use it as blush. Sometimes I'll use this to like set parts of my face. Such, such a good palette and it has a nice size mirror. And then the other one is from Shroud and Batty Bean. They're an amazing creator. If you want some good makeup inspiration, Batty Bean is going to be your go-to. I will link to her Instagram and her YouTube down below. I just, I know Batty Bean is her Instagram handle. I believe. Now that I say it, I'm like, is it though? Is it? Beautiful palette, such fun colors. I like that it's a mix of neutrals and pops of bright colors in there. And then you have the shimmers. I like this one as a highlight, by the way. Great palette. I know you haven't seen it a ton in my content, but this is one I reach for a lot because also you can just take like one color and do a one color look. I feel like you, there's a lot of versatility in this palette and it's beautiful and the formula is great. For liquid eyeshadows, the About Face Fluid Eye Paints are amazing. I've purchased a ton of these. I think they sent me a couple as well, but I absolutely love these. And the black is beautiful. Like they're all beautiful. These do have a learning curve on them. So just kind of prep for that. It's definitely a product where you do a little bit and then blend and then you can build it up. Don't go in, in my opinion, don't go in and like do your full eye because it can be tricky to blend. They're just very, very pigmented, that's all. And they're beautiful and I love them. And I want to own every single one. I have so many of these and I love them. All right, brow products. The e.l.f. Brow Lift was the standout for me this year. This is a clear gel. Um, brush it on with the spoolie. But this works really well on my brows to hold them in place, kind of like spike them up smooth them out, whatever I want to do. I love this. For eyeliner pencils, the About Face ones are great. They did send these to me. I love the variety of colors and I love the formula. It's very creamy and it's easy to blend out and it's very long lasting. And they're great like on the lid, on the waterline. I really, really like them. And then for liquid, the Half Magic Beauty Liner. I love this. They sent this to me and it is like just the most unique shaped wand I have ever seen. Like it's such a strange shape, but it works so well. And I struggle still with liquid liners. I just don't like a lot of them. I feel like with a lot of them, I don't know. My eyelids are different shapes and one is more hooded than the other. And so that can create issues for me with liners. So I'm still like trying to figure out what liner I prefer on myself. And honestly, a lot of the time I just do like a tiny wing and smudge everything out or I do pencil liner, or I do like black eyeshadow. I think that the era of like liquid liner is an everyday thing is honestly over, at least for the time being. But I think this is changing that. Like this is beautiful. It's so easy to use. Like it's pretty foolproof. And they also have a stencil that you can get to that's not like a stencil like that, but it's like a curved stencil you put up against your face. It makes it so, so easy. I really like this. For mascara, I only have one to talk about, and it is the Tower 28. Is this called Make and Waves? Make Waves Mascara. This is beautiful. It lived up to the hype. I've tried a handful of other mascaras. I do still really like the Milk Kush Mascara. I'd say, like, that comes in second. I just don't have one at the moment. This one is so, so good. And I've just found that, like, I try and go for the cheaper mascaras, and they just never work the way I want them to. These ones are great, though. The NYX, this is Milky Glosses, beautiful. Love the formula, love the colors. They're very sheer, really nice. And then the Lawless Forget the Filler Glosses, amazing. Um, they sent me these in a few different shades. I love them all. They definitely are plumping. It is a thicker gloss. If you don't like thick glosses, you're not going to like this one, but I don't mind it, so I do. The NYX one, I've purchased this in a few colors. They're all beautiful. I want more. Also, the e.l.f. CBD Lip Oil. This is great. I've gone through so many tubes of this. I don't like running out of it. It's minty tasting and smelling. It's clear. It's very nourishing. 
This is a must have. For lip liners, about face, so freaking good. I've purchased a couple of them. They go on so smoothly. They're such beautiful colors. They're so pigmented. Like there's no tugging, there's no pulling. It's just like always nice. And you can like pat, blend them out with your finger or a brush very, very easily. But if you are looking for a budget one, I like the ColourPop ones, but the NYX ones are a little bit cheaper, I believe, and easier to find. You can just hop into any Ulta and there's going to be a ton of these. These do kind of like pull a little bit, but for the variety of shades and the price point, I'm okay with it. I will put up with that. There were no like bullet lipsticks that really stood out to me this year. I just didn't really wear a ton of them. I am more of like a lip gloss girl, I've realized. Like I wear bullet lipsticks, I do, don't get me wrong, and I have a bunch. For my everyday looks or for like, I tend to either do a lip liner gloss combo or grab a liquid lipstick more often than I do traditional lipsticks. I'm not sure why this is because I, I like traditional lipsticks a ton. It is what it is. But the NYX Lip Lingerie XXL, these are great. I feel like these are kind of like a hybrid between them. I feel like it's like a cream liquid lip or like a moussey liquid lip. They have a ton of shades in these, including black, and they go on sale for like 10 bucks. I think regular, they're between 10 and 15. I don't remember exactly, but it's just a really pretty formula. It doesn't dry down completely, so it's not like a matte liquid lipstick. It's not transfer proof or anything like that, but they're pretty. They stay put pretty well. They're great for touch-ups throughout the day. For an actual liquid lip, I love the Half Magic one. They sent me this. Um, they sent me a couple of shades, but Mouth Cloud is my favorite. This is a very beautiful, like, grungy brownie red. I love it. I'd say more of like a moussey formula, but it is gorgeous. It's not irritating. It's not weird on the lips. I absolutely love it. I don't know why I'm doing that when I'm not even wearing this lipstick, but it's a great one. What I am wearing is another one I was going to talk about, which is about face. I purchased a few of these. I picked up the bright orange because of Ash Levi. Oh my gosh, she is another one of my huge makeup inspirations, but, but I'm wearing a nude color today. I love the formula of these. They aren't super drying on the lips. And then Black Moon Cosmetics, again, for like the millionth time. I say this like I've done a, a favorites video recently. I haven't in a couple of years, but I love Black Moon Cosmetics. I reach for their liquid lipsticks again and again and again and again. They're beautiful. They hold up really well. They apply really well. I love them. I've been filming now for over half an hour, so I'm going to cut this off, but that is my 2022 makeup favorites. I hope you enjoyed this. If you've used anything I talked about, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'd love to hear what your favorites of the year are too, so comment and let me know. And let me know if you would want to see this for like skin and hair. I'm not totally sure because I don't, I don't have the best hair routine. Um, I'm pretty dang lazy with it. But if there's interest, maybe I will do it. Same with skincare. I feel like I'm still trying to figure out exactly what works for me and trying different stuff. And it's a lot of the same brands over and over. But if there's interest, let me know and maybe I will film it. Anyway, I hope you're having a great year so far and I'll see you next time.